like going to VAMP camp for the last time and... VAMP camp? <laughs> Isn't that what you call it? No. <laughs> it's the very first time I've ever heard it. I like it though. Oh, I'm intrigued. Where do I sign up? Where do I, do I, I could have I used this four years ago when I was starting okay. to play Jasper. You just tell me there's a VAMP camp now. It's great. <laughs> you should change the name of your band to VAMP camp. Yeah, really? <laughs> Our lead song would be, You Suck. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like having Kristen join in uh, with you guys, you know, having her also do the prosthetics and all the makeup um, on this last two films? I, it was funny because she finally understood <laughs> some of the challenges presented uh, when, when playing a vampire. And um, she'd be like, oh man, my eyes really hurt. Um, <laughs> With the context? Yeah, with the context. Yeah. <clears throat> How did Bill differ as a director on this one than the past directors that you've worked with? Well, everybody has a different energy, and that energy, um, as a director, it kind of trickles down to the rest of the crew. And even the cast and, and everyone really kind of feels that. Um, and the set, you know, and, and, and the film illustrates that. And I think with, with Bill, he had this really just calm demeanor. He knew what was going on. He was very open to being asked questions. He always had an answer. Um, yet at the same time, he was always open to different ideas. And that, that was what you know was fantastic about working with him. I, I, always, is this on? I always say um, Bill puts the gentle and gentleman. You know, he was a very gentle director and he's very classy. And uh, he was very caring and you could tell that he cared about what you were going through as an actor and uh, and what your thought process was, and he wanted to hear it. And, and it wasn't just about setting up camera, it was really about the emotional journey that the characters were going through, and, and you could feel that. I guess it's on me. I, I was curious if you guys would talk about what props you might have taken home from, or borrowed from set. Uh, I tried to take Carlisle's ring, I think on the second or third movie, uh, I said it wouldn't come off my finger. And I went home and they tracked me down. <laughs> they were like, we need the ring back. <laughs> and I think they wanted it back so they could take a mold and then sell it to all the fans. Because then they had like a, you know, they started selling the Carlisle rings. And then uh, I think on the fourth one I ended up asking to have one. So I, I have one of the original Carlisle rings. That's not mold made. <laughs> I have one of the mold weight. Carlisle. He, he bought one. I bought one as soon as they came out. Look at me, how Peter. <laughs> I'm a I'm a huge rule follower, and it gave, like it, made, it gave me panic attacks to think about like actually taking anything when I would ask and they would say no, and then I would think about taking it, but I just knew that if I did, then someone would find out and I'd be in trouble somehow. They find that stuff out. Um, Kristen actually stole my uh, my in the first movie. Um, in the baseball scene, I wore these really cool sneakers, and she stole them from me. Uh, she came over to my house and said, "Like, hey, guess what? They have two of these. You know, you can have one." And she gave them to me. And then I never ended up wearing. They have all the mud on them, so I never ended up wearing them. So they're just sitting in my closet still. I might as well have not taken them. But um, I guess there are probably some other things that I would have liked to have had, but I can't. Last question. reviews of films, or is it just the fans' reactions that uh, you concern yourself with? I, I notice, I mean, take notice, I, I definitely am curious to see how they're received, and, but I think the fan response it, with this type of movie is, you know, the overwhelming priority for us. I mean, for me, I think I want to hope that we've given them the story that, that they've seen in their minds for all these years, and uh, how, do you agree? The harshest critics are the fans, you know, because they, they've lived with these books and they have these, uh, the visions of these movies already in their heads, so if you can, if most of the fans like them and you can't please everybody, but if you get most of those fans that like them, I think that we've done our job and, and hopefully the critic, critical fans, I mean the critics like them too, but, uh, you know, when you have a book that's, hits such a big mass market, you're hoping that you tap into that and that most of those people like it. Okay, thank you all very much. Thank you.